So I recently created a set of stationary icons and I thought this would be good material to show how to make very simple flat design imagery in Illustrator, especially if you're a beginner, but to add those few little details like shading and shadows to make them pop that little bit more. So not pure flat design, but something that gives a little bit more depth to your images. So what I'm gonna do is I've taken three of these icons that I created and I thought I would take them apart and show you how I put them all together because what I love to do when I create really simple iconography is use your classic shapes squares circles rectangles and use the tools within Illustrator to manipulate those shapes and make them into whatever you could possibly need within reason sometimes you do have to pull out the pen tool and make some more organically shaped things. But for the most part, these are all created with my basic shapes in Illustrator. So let's start with the pencil. So firstly, let's look at the shapes. Whenever you're deciding to create something, always try and break it down to its most simplistic shapes. And that's a good start. So really what you're looking at here is some rectangles, a rounded rectangle at the bottom for the eraser, and a triangle. And those are your the simplest shapes that we can possibly use to create this pencil. So let's start. So we'll start with the main body of the pencil, which is our simple rectangle. I'm just gonna grab the color from there. So there we have it. And then we've got some smaller rectangles here to create the metal part of the pencil. So again, we'll just grab our rectangle tool and Let's create just one for now. And what I'll do is just hold Alt, pull that down, and Control D to repeat the transformation. And then we'll select every second one, color it in the lighter gray, and we're done. Now we'll go into the eraser at the end. This is a slightly more squat rectangle. There we go. We'll color it in the same pink. And we'll go into our direct selection tool, select the bottom anchors so we can pull in these to make our circle. And there we have it, the eraser done. And now lastly, we need the tip of our pencil, which is a triangle. And a slightly wonky triangle for the lead of the pencil and boom that's it so depending on what your design calls for that could be all you need to do absolutely fine nothing wrong with that that's a classic flat design pencil but what we want to do here is just give it a little bit more detail to really make it pop out of the the screen so what we can see here is we've got some shading on the left and we've got some highlights on the right and we've also got a little bit more detail here on the top of the pencil. So let's start with the detail. So we'll go to our circle tool, create our first circle, color it the same color as the wood of the pencil. We want to make this side slightly smaller. And again, we'll alt and drag another copy out that side. So there we go. So we've got our top of the pencil. We can see these circles are slightly going out of the confines of our original triangle, but that is easy to fix. So all we wanna do is we wanna select all the wooden part of the pencil at the top, and we wanna go into our shape builder tool, which is over here. Now what this will allow us to do is basically join shapes to make them into one shape as opposed to all these separate entities. You just have to make sure that all the shapes that you want to join or break apart are all selected. And what I wanna do is I wanna minus this little bit here. So I'm gonna press Alt, we'll see the cursor changes to a minus, draw over that and we'll get rid of those. And then finally, I wanna join all of these elements. So I'll just paint over them and we're done. So as you can see, because we applied a transformation, it brings us to the top of the pile. So I just wanna to go to arrange, send backward, so we can see the top lead part of our pencil again. And we're getting there. All that we need to do now is add the shading and the highlights 
and our main pencil is done. So first thing I want to do is grab my pen tool, but we're not doing any curves. They're all just straight lines. So we're going to start at the top here. Make sure your guides are on. It'll make your life a lot easier. Drag it down until it snaps to the edge of the circle and drag it all the way down past the end of the eraser. Then I want to go across until I can see the guide telling me that the edge is there. Hold down shift to keep a straight line. Hold down shift again and back to the top. So all we want to do is select our eraser and the shape we just made. Go back into our shape builder tool and then we want to just halt and take this bit away. And then a really easy way to do the shading is I normally just color my shape in black and then put my opacity down to about 10. That normally does it. Boom, that's one bit done. Now really, because we know these circles are the same size, we know that the width of this shape is going to be the same size as what's needed on this side. So all I'm going to do is alt drag to duplicate that. And instead of black, I'm going to change it into white and I want to flip it. So we go into object, transform, reflect, make sure we're on vertical. If we're not sure what the result's going to be, we can have a look at the preview and OK. And then just drag it onto the other side of the pencil. And we are done. Super easy, but with two slight additions to our design, we've made what used to be a quite a flat pencil into something that has a little bit more depth and pops out of the screen a bit better. Now to finish up, what I did was I created a little bit of a gradient shadow at the back of the pencil. All I did for that, selected my pencil, hold Alt, make a duplicate, and then I want to unite it so it's one shape and one color. Boom. So automatically it's white. So let's just change the color so we can actually see what's going on. A little bit of an anomaly there, so let's get rid of that. So what I did to create this shadow is put a gradient onto our new shape and put the light color, the same color as the, the background. So I know it's going to be this pink shade. And then the darker side was a dark version of that pink. And that's it. When I apply that to the pink background, you can see it fades from the darker pink and fades away. And of course you could, I could have just chosen to have that shadow, just the darker pink and it probably would have worked just as well, but just play around and see what works best. So there we go. That was the pencil moving on. So just look at the simplicity of this image. You know, it's an eraser, but it's literally just some rectangles. But let's, let's go through it. So firstly, let's create our cover of the eraser. And then as you can see, the top is slightly smaller than the cover. That just adds a tiny bit more detail. So we'll just do that. And then Alt Shift, drag it to the bottom and make it slightly smaller. And we have the bottom part of our eraser. And that is pretty much it. Now we'll select them all, Alt and drag, unite so it's one shape and then I could have drawn it like I did the other one but this is just another method to, to get the same result. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to create a square over the bit I don't want shaded. Select them both and we want a minus front so it's going to take that square away and leave me with this shape. And then we're just going to color it black, opacity 10 like we did before. I'm just going to drag it onto there. So now all I'll do is create my, duplicate this whole shape again, unite it, and instead color it with the same yellow as the lighter part of the gradient and a darker yellow for the shadowed area. And we're done. Boom. Finally, the book, probably the most complex of our shapes, but really still very, very simple to achieve. So let's start by breaking this apart. What do we have here? We have a cylinder shape here. We have two rounded rectangles and we have a little bit more of an organic shape to create the pages here. So let's put it all together. 
So I'm gonna start with a rectangle to create the spine of my book. Okay, and now what I wanna do is I wanna create circles to add this little bit of perspective to the spine of the book. So we'll go to our circle tool and we'll go to the center to use our existing shape as a reference, press down Alt and Shift and there we have it. We'll Alt and Shift, pull that down and then I want to select the bottom circle and the main spine and we want to unite those shapes or we can use our shape builder and join them that way and then we want to bring this circle to the front select the spine and the circle and use the minus front tool to complete the top of the spine next let's do some rectangles for the front and the back of the book make sure they're all lined up nicely that's one what I want to do is I just want to curve these two edges. I don't want to curve the edges that are close to the spine. So we'll select these two anchors over here and pull these in a little bit. And now that I've done one, I can just duplicate that one over, go to object, transform, reflect it. And I have the other side of my book. There we go. Let's just get a little bit of the color going over here so it's easy to see. There we go. So now we want to create our pages. So I'm going to get my pen tool and let's start round about here. Make sure we're in the middle of the spine and we want to click there and then we want our page to end round about there. So we'll click and drag until we get our desired shape. Remember a lot of flat design is um, exaggeration. Because you're working with such, such simplistic imagery you want to exaggerate some some elements to really make them pop and then that's it. So I'm going to color that in sort of a light gray so we can still see it on the white background and then I want to send that to the back and then we have one side. So now that we have that, I'm going to Alt, click, reflect, OK, line that up on that side. Then I'll select both of these pages, Alt, Shift, drag it up a little bit to duplicate both of them, color it in a slightly darker gray, and then I just want to pull these in a little bit and there you have it a very easy method in giving your flat simple vector designs a little bit more detail if you like this video let me know it's my very first YouTube video of this nature so let me know if it works for you and if you want more of this type of content I've got loads of plans for this channel so be sure to come back thanks everyone